James Phelps, who played Fred Weasley in the Warner Brothers films. And then Oliver Phelps, who played George Weasley. Devona Lynch, who played Luna Lovegood. Matthew Lewis, who played Neville Longbottom. <laughs> and Devin Murray, who played Seamus Finnegan. <coughs> so, I'm sure you guys have some questions to ask these guys. Um, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when you have a question, and um, I'll call on you just so we're not all talking at once. Um, but I'm going to kick things off with a question, if you guys don't mind. I just want to know, can you guys, how it felt to be part of the Harry Potter film series? <laughs> that was right. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we could have said that there was a lot more worse things we could have done. Um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic, um, and the fact that we're still associated with it because things like um, like this can take place with um, like the celebration events and fans can can interact, and, and, and in what a great location is the Universal Orlando here. Um, yeah, it's been been absolutely the last. Yeah, I mean, I, what's to say? It's uh, been an incredible experience that started when um, I was like 10, 11 years old, I'm 25 this year, uh, and I'm still, you know, still a part of it, still here doing doing stuff for the, for the world of Harry Potter. It's just been incredible. Um, it's hard to put into words, really. It's um, it's been a real roller coaster. And it's, yeah. No, we're always going to have a piece of Harry Potter here. It'll never be forgotten about, and it'll always still be part of our lives. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have that. I definitely find with the acting industry, it's so sort of cutthroat. And then we still have this cushion, and they're always so nice to us, and they do welcome us back like a family. And you don't really find that in this industry, and that's been lovely to have. And it's not going away anytime soon. So we'll turn it over to you guys. Let's start with Jamie. Jamie, you uh, we're obviously here at a Harry Potter fan celebration. It's been a few years since the last movie, uh, but now we've got all this great theme park stuff happening. The fans are still very excited. Why do you think Harry Potter is timeless? Like that? <laughs> I think it's kind of because there's there's always seen, there seems to be like so when the films are coming out, there's the guys who watched it at the cinema, and now you've got the guys who are maybe too young to see it in the cinema who've now got into it on. You know, on home, home video or, or DVD. Um, well, people are always getting into the books and then they go to the film if they haven't necessarily seen the film. So there's always something that brings people in. Or even maybe if you just come to a, a great theme park like Art Adventure, just wander in and get into it that way. Um, so I think that's, to me, that's, that's why people seem to re not, not recycle, but there's always a new constant influx of people. I think also, as well, the fact that I always felt with Potter, and not, I don't think I've felt this with many. I read a lot of fantasy and science fiction, but I didn't feel it with other things. That Harry Potter very much could be real, like because it wasn't. They they still were normal teenagers behind it all, and they were dealing with a lot of the things that well, you know other teenagers were dealing with growing up. I was dealing with, and so it felt very real, but it was still like a sort of escapism at the same time because it wasn't our world. And, and I think this is kind of even it's it's made that more clear, having the park here, like actually going from the mobile world to the wizarding world, and that's why people, everyone sort of wants to escape to that and have somewhere that's more fantastical than our world, but also that they can relate to. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, um, the stories, uh, uh, sorry, a bit of a, a lot you like this, the stories are universal, uh, they go <laughs> all across, you know, uh, age ranges, um, gender, race, like any that they're accessible for, for anyone all over uh, the globe and um, and I think that, that, that really helps and uh, the story is timeless, you know, that, that epic battle of good versus evil and there's you know there's characters that everyone can relate to in the story and, and all their journeys and and the world's so vivid, the universe is so so vivid that you can create these three D immersive environments like they've done here. And, um, and people can just keep coming back and discovering new things, I think. I'm not going to talk anything they just said, so uh, I, I disagree with them 100%. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I start? Um, are we going to be able to hear any of your voices or see any of your faces mm -hmm. when we visit uh, Diagon Alley this summer? 
Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs> there's, oh, I'm cool. there's, um, there's a lot more information to think about Diagon Alley, and you guys know that. So, um, you know, it wouldn't be Diagon Alley without some of our favorite characters from the very fun. So, so much for that question. <laughs> Matt, you alluded that you've been doing this for 14 years, more than half of your life. Um, it's a long time, and there are people in the industry that certainly don't want to be, you know, stigmented with one person that they portray. You know, women of the twins and everything else. Do you find yourself that you want to separate from Harry Potter at all, but you still want to come back to it on occasion, or do you want to stay with the fandom and just roll with it ever, forever? What's, what's your thoughts on? separating yourselves? No, it's, it's, it's a good question. Um, you know, as, as an actor, I think um, throughout the, the, the film series, particularly towards the end, um, you know, myself, I definitely had one, one eye on, on the career side of it and where I was going to go uh, uh, post-Potter. And, um, you know, I've been really fortunate. I, I, you know, I've come out the back of it and I've, I've, been, I've been working and uh, I've done stuff that where I've been able to play characters that are so you know, drastically different from, from Neville and I've been really fortunate uh, in, in that respect. Um, so yeah, there's definitely that, tri that idea of trying to do something different, but at the same time, you know, you, you can't just ignore the past and, and, and I'm not, you know, begrudging of, of, of Potter because it, it gave me the, um, you know, the ability to go on and do the, the, uh, all this stuff and, uh, and it gets, I get the chance to come to Florida uh, and, and, you know, chill out and see these guys again and and meet you wonderful people. Um, so yeah, like, you know, when they asked me, I, I jumped to the chance, and it, it, I think it can be done alongside you know, work at the same time. Um, I think you know, talking about previous roles I've played, not a big deal for me, I think. I agree, I think like, definitely for me, it, it gave me a career, and I don't, think, I don't think I would have had the confidence to even go into acting if it hadn't been for this, so it really pushed me into this, and I find that I love it. And, um, it just, yeah, it opens doors, like not, even not just acting, like we went to NASA the other day, the Space Center, and this guy like brought us into a room, he's like, no one's seen this spaceship, <laughs> it's like, why, why, you just would never connect the two, but it does, it just, it has opened so many doors, there's so many opportunities, so I think it is what you make it, make of it, and yeah, you kind of, you do want to mold your career and not be seen as a child you know, all the time, and um, I don't know, for me, I, I'm really happy to have been identified with Luna because I like, I, I always gravitate towards those misunderstood characters and stories and like talking about acting range, like that, I, I love playing those characters, so it, for me, it's a help. Um, but yeah, I, and I think every one of us, we've just been given a platform and we, it's up to us what we want to do with it, you know? For me, doing Harry Potter was the best thing I've ever done in my life, so far, so uh, like, I'll never be grudged to the fact that the time that I spent on Harry Potter was the best thing I've ever done. And Seamus Finnegan, he was so much like me, like connected <laughs> straight through. Uh, Seamus is clumsy, I'm clumsy, so I'm kind of living Seamus' life every day of the week. I blow up my microwaves uh, <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah, not on purpose, obviously. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, working on Potter was... You get like, I don't think I could get typecast because so, like to be fair, Seamus wasn't the biggest character in the world. And people remember me playing Seamus but he wasn't on screen every two seconds, so it's a character that people can't forget about, they try to forget about. So I think for me it's easier to go off in different ways. After Harry Potter I kinda of took a break to get back home and get back to my family, get back to horses. Because being on Harry Potter for ten or eleven years kind of Throw me away from all my family and friends. So after Harry Potter, back home, back to normality a little bit, mm -hmm. and now it's kind of time to get back in the saddle again and do more work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sharon. I think it reminded me of the Star Trek convention when I see this here, but it's a little different. You guys are the same age as the fans who grew up with this. I'm kind of wondering if you get that kind of super fan who knows every you know thing you might have forgotten he did. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you see them. Yeah, um, especially it's, we, we were saying we were having a look around the park today. Actually, when I viewed the rides, and uh, we were saying to the guys from Universal, like, so do people often wear robes. 
<laughs> you see the rose, and then you see the guys probably mid mid twenties or so with the lightning bolt on a sharpie on their head <laughs> in the road, queuing up to go on the ride. Um, so it does mean so much to, to people, and uh, yeah, it's quite interesting when they say, "Oh, so you remember in this film when this happened?" I'm trying to remember. That. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it does happen, but I think that just shows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think that just shows what it means to people and how important it is to people's lives, um, and to be able to have represented something that's so significant to them is just. Was it like that for you as a kid? Um, yeah, yeah, a bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when we were reading the books, the films hadn't come out, but at the same time, you can, you, you've got an image in your head, and, and uh, you, everyone knows a character, someone in their life like those characters. Um, and I suppose that people see us, and especially playing good guys, a lot more open to coming and chatting to us, um, like like them, like their friends. Matthew, you said at the very top that life is somewhat like a roller coaster. And we are here at one of the greatest amusement parks, theme parks on this side of the pond. What is your favorite theme park experience? Oh, wow. Um, you mean besides the wonderful world of Harry Potter? <laughs> and in us, that is it. Um, I, don't, I mean, the thing about, about the theme parks over here, particularly you know, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, is you just don't do anything by half. Like in the UK, our theme parks are like made of polystyrene, and you know they fall apart, and the illusions ver like shattered very easily. Whereas here, it's just it's all you know built to last, and it just feels so real. And you know you can one minute you can be walking down New York, and then you're in San Francisco, and then you're in Hogsmeade, and it's just, it's just incredible um, what you do here. Everything's just bigger and better, and um, the roller coasters are great. I love the I love um, I love the Hulk. Yeah. yeah, I like that right. I love Seussland. I just think it's so beautiful. And I, I tend to wear a lot of colours, so I always end up blending in really well with Seussland. Um, and also the, the Hollywood, the, the really crazy roller coaster, the red one, with the dip. Yeah, the rip ride, that's what it's called. Yeah. I think the, there's an experience of memory uh, for us is when the Wizarding World opened. Uh, that was just insane because we were doing press when we were at 4 a.m. Um, and gradually the sun was coming up and you could just see the line just getting longer and longer. And I don't know how many thousands of people turned up, but as an experience, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Like people just wanted to be there and even if they wouldn't have time to queue up to get in. I think, I mean, the average ride time is what, an hour and a half or something? I think, is it like 12 hours or something? If they, from where they joined the ride? But they just wanted to be there. So as an experience, that was something that was always staying. I think yesterday I'm a huge Simpson fan, and uh, I went to Springfield yesterday. Which so I had a had a crusty burger and a Duff beer and a flaming mo, and uh, it was that, was that was really cool. And a big donut, which I feel quite shameful about now. <laughs> it was the biggest donut. It was I bigger than my head. It really was. But um, yeah, as an experience, that was that was really cool. But like Matt was saying, it's you know, especially Universal here, they don't do things by half. So uh, yeah, especially when. Yeah, if you ever saw what they're, they've got installed for the summer, it does look really, really cool. Yeah. Um, getting back to the books now, I mean, you talked about you know, reading the books ahead of the movies. Were there any moments out of the books that you, you know, involved your characters that you wish had actually made it into the finished film? I was, I was thinking uh, what didn't, a character what didn't make was Peeves. Uh, the Bolts guys, really, from from a Fred and certain Fred and George related, um, but you know, I suppose they have to at least trim some stuff down to make it into, like, to get the films the way they are. But yeah, that was that was one character I would have liked to see. Seen them. Yeah, I always remember them saying that if they were to make everything in the first book into a movie, the movie would be about seven hours long. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, they have to uh, cut things out. But yeah, Peeves is a, a pretty cool character in the books. Um, I was really gutted that I didn't get to commentate the Quidditch match because uh, I find sports really boring. Sorry, but it, it puts me to sleep. Um, so it would have been fun to make it more, just to, to give it the love good treatment. I think. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I think I think I've had sort of the same one for for a few years. I think I I always really wanted to shoot the stuff with um, with Neville's parents in um, St Mungo's Hospital. 
uh, it was something that David uh, Yates was really keen on, and um, and we just you know we kept saying every every sort of month or so would go by, so I'm really trying to get it back in. Um, you know, we're trying to find time, and it just got away from us unfortunately in the scheduling, and we never got we never got around to, to shooting it. Um, to which David was was very apologetic, and it was a shame. You know, I thought it was it was really quite quite um, quite important for Neville's backstory. It sort of showed what his um, you know what his uh, inspiration was, and um, it sort of showed why he did everything that he did and why he held had, had Harry's back and fought a good fight. Um, so that was a shame, but um, we just had to find that that journey other ways, which I think we sort of did the best we could. For me, I think it was well, I actually got to film the part that never actually made it into the film, so kind of, it was when Seamus, no, when Neville comes in with his leg like a curse, and mm. Seamus has to turn around and say he'll fix it, and Neville kind of gets up and says, no, I've got a hope, what was it, you blow my kneecaps off or something, but, <laughs> but uh, Seamus had to have his ball patched down at the end of it, and I thought that was pretty cool, because they had like, Shane, like my freckles and everything on it, it was kind of freaky looking. Well, then, I, was I, thought, almost, I thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're aging pretty quick. But yeah, I was always disappointed that never made it into the movie. Because I thought that was pretty cool. And I broke like 20 or 30 ones that day. <laughs> and I can remember I keep on banging them on the, the table. And like they weren't made the best, so they kind of snapped <laughs> every second day. Well, you all grew up together. Um, is this kind of like a like a high school reunion, or besides you two, you know, do you all keep? In we don't together? see that. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is kind of yeah. Um, I mean, we still do keep in touch, but it was cool to have the gang back together. Really, I I don't know. It was kind of pick up where we left off, don't we? But, um, yeah, it's tough. You know, everyone's everyone's sort of around the world with their filming schedules or whatever, and um, it's hard to. To find time to get people together. I mean, we, we sort of play we play cricket, don't we? Like once a year, yeah, yeah. when you play with Alfie and stuff. Um, so people see each other and we stay in touch, but it's um, it's quite rare to have this kind of experience. It's kind of nice. It's been good fun the last last few days. Yeah, it's good because at least there's a, a slight structure to the schedule. Um, but you're always together, so we can catch up on even on old times as well. But also, uh, yeah, just chill about what's going on and have some have some fun while we're doing it. Yeah, and we always know there's going to be more of these, even when they say, this is it, it's done, <laughs> how does it feel, it's done, it's never done, there's always like, I never get too emotional leaving all these people because, you know, six months down the line there'll be another theme park somewhere in the world, and we'll all be back. Well, <laughs> 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 um, so Matt and Mona, uh, Matt, you mentioned that like, the opportunities this has really afforded you, and uh, both of you have done uh, stage in the last year and a half, um, and I mean, pretty major roles considering how young you are. Um, kind of, can you talk a little bit about those experiences and, and how you think that stage has been different for you, I guess, than the last one? I really just, I think when I got out of Potter, I still didn't, I kind of felt like a bit of a fraud in terms of acting. I was like, I don't know what to do. Because I, I knew then a little bit like inside out, but it was more just the child in me coming out and playing. And I didn't know how to approach a, a character who I was already like obsessed with or, you know, really ha had a connection with. Um, so that was just, it kind of, I kind of, I did something that was sort of, it was small scale because I wanted to just explore. And I found it, challenging it was uh, because it wasn't and also because it was this is, I guess this is the different from you know low budget and huge Harry Potter scale projects is that you have to be so much more responsible like aware of yourself you have to look out for yourself because they don't have the luxury of time to spend on things to keep going over things and um, sometimes it, it, it can come out looking awful whereas with Harry Potter if it looked bad we just do it again and again and again until it until it looks like great so yeah, it, there was a certain, I, I felt more, I had more creative freedom, I suppose, and like it didn't have to go through so many filters, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I did, uh, I enjoyed it, but I probably prefer film because, um, yeah, you, you, you can take more time over it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mine was, mine was um, largely similar. You know, you come out of a film like, like Potter that we've done for so many years, and I'd never, you know, a lot of actors, job away in the, the theatre for years um, before they you know, get anywhere near a, a TV film camera. Um, 
so I, I felt like I needed to go back and go to that sort of you know, that, that purest form of acting and see if I could do it. Um, so I did a, I did a, a kind of a smaller play originally like like years ago like three four years ago, and I was crap. I was like so bad. Um, I just never done it before. I was really sort of in at the deep end, uh, and it took quite a while to, to get through that. Um, but sort of towards the end of the tour, the uh, the, the tour, um, you know, I started to pick it up, and I learned from the other guys and got where I was going. And by the end of it, I was, you know, I was really enjoying it and I was into it. And so um, when I got the chance to go on the West End last year, I, I just jumped at it, and um, and it was a really great show. And uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. That was a that was a, a much more you know pleasant experience than the, the previous play. Um, and yeah, and uh, I got what it was all about. Really loved it, and um, that, you know, that's those experiences, those opportunities come off the back of this. Yeah, absolutely. That play was amazing. Oh, did you see it twice? Oh wow! Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you should have told more people. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume you've all been over to Hogs. I mean, I just want to know what is your favorite thing over there. And then, especially for you guys, when you're new when Diagon Alley opens, what are you looking forward to seeing in there, especially in Weasley's Wizard and Weezes? Yeah, the 18th foot version of myself doing that should be pretty <laughs> nice. Uh, I think one of my favorite things over there is the butter, the frozen butter beer, especially in the summer. That's, uh, that's, that's probably one of my favorite things there, just seeing that. And like Oliver said, when the park first opened, seeing everyone walk through for the first time and just like me in Springfield yesterday, just it is literally everyone's just. <laughs> like, it is, it's, I'm sure that happens every day for the guys who who work here. So um, I think that's one of the great experiences for me is just seeing everyone because we kind of take it for granted because we've we've had the other thing in in the UK. So um, yeah, seeing seeing their reaction is is fantastic. Mm. I think it's uh, as you say for the, for the latest stuff like yeah, so. To see to see the Weasley's Wisdom Weasley's there, which isn't in the sound stage, uh, is probably the. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to it, and you know, like the snack boxes and stuff like that will be there. So, yeah, there's some there's some cool stuff, but that's all for later. later. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love just the detail that is put into it that makes it seem real. Like uh, even you know the signs on the wall say keep your hands in the cart. They're done on scrolls. Like it's all feels like Hogwarts and uh, yeah I, when I love the mandrakes I always have to stand and squeal at them for like 10 <laughs> seconds I find them funny and the toads the choir toads I think all the banders is pretty amazing getting to go in there the whole experience of picking the wands and I mean, that's amazing right like we were able to do things in Harry Potter that people would love to be able to do now they have the chance to come here and go in and have their one picked out and try a different one. Like, that's pretty awesome. I've been playing Jeopardy because I didn't hear the question. I've been trying to guess what, what <laughs> the question was. Uh, was it? Uh, what? You've been to Hog Hogsmeade. What was your favorite part? Okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Yeah. Right. Sorry. <laughs> that's what I thought it was. Um, yeah. Um, I just um, that first moment when um, when I went through uh, the main entrance and could see the castle, you know, off into the distance, and uh, and it just looked so big, and and, and I thought. You know, it's looked so far away as well. I was thinking it's going to be so amazing going through this whole town, reaching up into the castle at the end, and you go into all the shops. It just, it's just um, that was kind of what when I was a kid reading the books. That was what I just totally imagined. And obviously, when you go on a film set, it's, it's quite a bit different from that. And so to be able to come here and, and, and experience that, like I imagined it, Harry experienced it in the book, was um, that's pretty cool. Do we have time for one more question, Mark? Oh, we're getting mentioned earlier. Seeing the line of people building when the original Wizarding World opened, um, and Harry Potter is really a phenomenon. So, when did it impact um, you guys that you were part of something so much bigger, not just a movie, but something that would live on at theme parks and just have fans that are this devoted and more and more generations coming up? Um, I think uh, I think every every premiere when that, that was the first time you really you see it and you see more people arriving at them and. They got bigger and bigger. I mean, the last, the final one was the biggest premiere I think ever held in London, which says something about premieres that have been held in London. Um, and then you, you hear on the grapevine how people are naming their their children after characters and like really serious stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of one of those things. I'm sure that when when uh, when the expansion opens, it will be the same again. It will be, be so overly subscribed people to come and see it. Um, but yeah, I think there's always going to be people. 
getting into it and, and getting involved.